Welcome back. My name is Darren Thomas. I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at ridge regression using Python. So why don't we go ahead and get started here. Ridge regression is one of many types of regression that are, of course, available and, and commonly practiced in machine learning data science. And what you're doing with um, ridge regression is that this is a type of regular regularization regression in that you penalize coefficients that have that don't have a, a useful impact on the overall values or the output or the results of the analysis and so with ridge regression you reduce they call them you know problematic variables you know variables with low regression weights or whatever you reduce them close to zero but you never completely cancel them out now there are other st styles <laughs> of regularization regression in which you actually remove their influence for example lasso but that's not how ridge regression ridge regression works excuse me and so what we're going to do here is we're not going to focus as much on, on the theoretical aspects of this we're going to focus on how to deploy and use this inside or using python excuse me so we have three steps that we need to deal with we have to of course prepare our data we're going to really fly through that because that's not really the point of the video we also need to develop a baseline model because we want to see how the ridge regression improves the performance. And then lastly, we're going to, or after that, we're going to, of course, make our ridge regression model as you can see here. So right here in this next cell, we have all the, you know, uh, prior code that we need to kind of get things going in terms of modules. We're going to get our data from line one, this, uh, a module called pi data set numpy and pandas in lines two and three the grid search we got to do some uh, hyperparameter tuning so we're going to use a uh, grid search to help set that up uh, then after that we got our ridge regression that's the kind of the star of the video linear regressions for making the baseline model and then our metric that we're going to use is the mean squared error so we're going to go ahead and run this all right so next what we're going to do now is, is that we're just going to take a look at our data set. It's called Vietnam I, and it's kind of like a data set that contains some health information. Again, this comes from Pi data sets. So just take a quick look at that. Right here. So here's what it looks like. You can see we have various uh, variables. You can get the info by using the show dot argument when you use the data uh, function. So parvis, the 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 log or, or log of of uh, health expenses, age, the sex of the person, married, education, illness, injury, number of days sick, active days, insurance, yes or no, and the commune number. So. Uh, that's what the data looks like without any kind of adjustments made to it and we do need to do some cleaning here now we need to go through this rather quickly because it's not the point of the video but here are some things that we're going to adjust all right oh here we go so we need to change male and female. We need to make a dummy variable out of that. So that's what lines one and two are right here. Or actually lines one through three, excuse me. We'll do that first. And then in lines four, five, and six, oh, lines four and four through six, we're making our independent variable set and our de dependent variable set. So in lines four and five, these are the variables we're going, excuse me. These are the variables we're going to use. Never mind. These are the variables we're going to use right here for the independent variables. And then down here are the is, the is the variable. So we're trying to predict health expenses. So if you press control, enter, that's been ran. And so now we'll take a quick peek at the um, data again. And so you can see that we now have all these different values. They're mostly the same here. So, you know, now we have a, a variable for uh, sex here is zero and one. That's the main difference. And everything else is kind of pretty much the same. So what we're going to do now is we're going to move on 
to creating our baseline model. So the baseline model, of course, is not going to have any uh, ridge regression involved, just an old-fashioned um, old fashioned model using linear, linear regression. And the mean squared error is going to be our metric that we're going to use. So here we go. So here's the number we're trying to beat, 0 0.35, if you will. Now we're going to do our ridge model here. We're going to set things up here for the hyperparameter tuning. So what we're doing now here is, of course, we're going to make a, a model called ridge, an instance of it, and normalize the values here. And then we're also going to make our, our search grid. There are some parameters that we have to tune. So you can see here that our estimator is going to be the model we just made, or the instance, that's ridge and we have to tune some values. So the alpha is what we have to tune. And that's gonna be somewhere between the log value of negative five and two, and we're going to have eight of these. We could have made more, but that's just what we're gonna do. We're gonna have eight different values in the log space from negative five to positive two. Somewhere in there is gonna be used to tune our alpha parameter, hyperparameter, excuse me, because this cannot be set by itself. And so we're going to decide which value of alpha is the best using uh, the, the mean square error, the negative mean square error right here. This is our tool for determining how good it is. And then the number of jobs, this has to do with the processors and uh, the refit the values, of course. And then we're going to do a cross validation of 10. So we've talked about cross validation in prior videos. So I won't stress that too much. So once we do that, it's done. And so there's nothing to see yet. Now, what we're going to do now is that we're going to fit our model and we're going to see, okay, what's the best value? So remember, we already know the performance for the old-fashioned um, old fashioned linear regression. And so now we're trying to determine what value of uh, the alpha we can set for the ridge regression. And so it's thinking. And so we'll know in a moment or two. And it says here that it recommends an alpha of 0 0.01. Again, if we had put in more options, instead of just eight different values, we might have got something different. Or if we had made our log space larger, like from say negative 10 to positive 10, we might have got a different answer. And so now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna say, okay, if we use this one, this alpha of 0 0.01, what's the best score we can get? And you can see here is 0.38. So this is actually a little bit worse than what we were doing before. Um, again, you know, hey, it doesn't always work out the way we want, but we're gonna go through the process here. And so now what we're going to do here is we're going to make our ridge regression model. And what we're going to do is we're going to see what happens. So, we have our ridge regression model here and we set the alpha to 0 0.01. And so now we're going to plug in and make our second model. This is uh, after we set, fit the ridge model here in line two. In line three, we actually um, uh, analyze the results here using the mean squared error and we print that output. And so you can see here we got 0 0.35. And so, you know, the values are a little bit lower. Uh, this might be due in part to the fact that we did not do cross validation here, but when we were trying to find uh, an appropriate alpha value, we did do that. Now we're just gonna compare the differences between the baseline coefficients, so our, our regular old fashioned ordinary least squares regression model, and of course for our ridge regression model. So here we go. These are the coefficients for the regression model. So again, like the output, you know, we could have rounded this and made it more complicated, but we're just focused on the output. So first of all, you know, we made a dictionary here and then in lines two and three, we made a for loop. Again, this is a little complicated for people who are new to this. And then we just share the output down below. And so here are the different regression, ordinary least squares regression outputs right here. And now this doesn't have any meaning for us until we compare it to how is it different for the ridge regression model. So here we go. So 
So you can see that they're mostly the same. Uh, almost exactly. Looks like injury is about the same. Ill days. Almost exactly the same. So this might be why we had about similar performance because there were no variables that needed to have a strong penalty to kind of remove their influence from the model because they weren't contributing much or there was a problem with it or whatever. The numbers are very, very similar. And so that's why we, of course, got similar outputs. But remember, the purpose here is not to have, you know, ooh, ah results, but rather to go through the process of how to use various algorithms using Python. So the performance is about the same in terms of the mean squared error and also in terms of the coefficients for the various variables that were in both of these models. So let me see if I can summarize what we talked about and then wrap up this video. So in this video, we took a look at how to use ridge regression. And so the purpose of ridge regression is one of those forms of regularization uh, regression in which the algorithm is able to penalize, you know, variables that don't have a, that are not contributing much or that, you know, have various problems with them. Again, the, the theoretical details are kind of beyond the scope of this video. And so we began by preparing our data. This is something we've done before. I don't have to spend much time on that. And then we had to make our baseline model right here. And then down here, we began our, our hyperparameter tuning experience right here to try to figure out what's an appropriate value for alpha. Alpha is the hyperparameter associated with ridge regression that you have to tune yourself in order to figure out how much of a penalty to apply to the various coefficients that are not quite meeting the expectations. And so after we did that, we found that, hey, if we tune our alpha to 0 0.01, it'll give us our best score. And the best score you can get with the ridge regression model was right here, which is actually worse than the regularization, or excuse me, the the uh, ordinary least squares regression model. And so here we actually ran the model. Now again, there's a difference here. In the hyperparameter tuning, we had the cross validation going on. And so, you know, that helps to change things a little bit more. But down here, we just ran the ridge regression with the alpha set. So that's why the score was lower. In this 0 0.35, this is almost exactly what we got with the ordinary least squares. There's almost no difference here. Then we took a look at the coefficients for the baseline model and also for the ridge model, and they were about the same, which makes sense because the mean square error was about the same. So in our example, ridge regression did not make a difference. However, our point here was not to make a difference, but to provide an example of how to employ the use of ridge regression if you decide to use this for your analysis. So I would like to thank you for watching. My name is Darren Thomas. I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. Take care.